might have this problem with donuts. Don't be judging me. I tell you what, I, Doc, are you are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, good morning. Well, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I was looking for my bullets a second ago. You know, we were talking off mic, <laughs> and uh, you know, we 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 was trying to decide whether or not we can get away with some uh, good old Southern rock uh-huh. here on everybody's country because you know, there's nothing more country than Southern rock, right? Right. You know, so uh, I figured I'd slide in some "Give Me Back My Bullets" there. I, I was gonna do our, our favorite red, white, and blue. Yeah. And then I looked, and wow, that thing is like five and a half minutes long. But it's good though. Oh, it's a great five and a half minutes. But uh, I didn't have five and a half minutes to spare. Right. So, uh, but I tell you what, I do have to spare. Uh huh. It's National Donut Day. You got donuts to spare? I do have donuts to spare. <laughs> donuts would definitely put a spare tire on your Ooh, belly, though. I mean, yeah, I don't care about that. I already got one. <laughs> I carry one with me everywhere I go. But if you guys out there in uh, listener land would like to uh, get you a dozen donuts, I'll tell you what, I'll take caller number four right now. 836-9559, caller number four. We'll hook you up with a dozen donuts from our buddies out at Sweetie Donuts on Cash Road right here in Cape. They're the ones right next door to the barber shop, don't you know? Yeah. So uh, 836-9559, you can go ahead and give me a call right now. I will take caller number four, and we'll see if we can't get you hooked up with a uh, dozen donuts. 836-9559, the DJ line. While we're waiting on that to occur, it is time for the roundtable. Brought to you each and every weekday morning by our buddies over at Stories, Floor, and Carpet. Remember, Stories, Floor, and Carpet for quality you can count on since 1958. Your caller number one. Try again. All right. Uh, let's see. We're also brought to you by our friends out at the Flaming Pig Barbecue. You know, you can get you some of that good old Flaming Pig stuff this afternoon at the uh, first Friday. What is it? Slice of Summer? Uh, yes. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be fun. Your caller number two. Try again. Uh, let's see. We're brought to you by SAU Tech. They've got multiple job openings for you to have a career in higher education. Your caller number three. Try again. All right. And uh, let's see. SAU Tech.edu. The best way to get a hold of them. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning. You trying to cash in on a dozen donuts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Who is this? Who is this? Brett Honeycutt. Brett Honeycutt. How's it going, Brett? Good, how are you? Oh, it's just another day in paradise, don't you know? Is it Brett or Brett? Brett. B-R-I? B-R-I-T-T. Absolutely. I just want to make sure, you know what I mean? If I don't put it right on the uh, gift certificate, you don't get no doggone donut. All right, I'll be by the seat. <laughs> that sounds like a winner, man. Uh, the office should be open till 5. All right, thank you. Huh? Bye-bye. All righty, so uh, yeah, we we hooked up uh, Brit Honeycut there with a dozen donuts, and you guys keep listening because uh, I've got a bunch more of those to give away during the roundtable, and we're just gonna give them away at random. But you got to listen for your chance to win. Nah, 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 nah. Mm. I'm just saying, I ain't giving them all away right now. I'm gonna make you listen. St. John's Place, fourteen hundred Highway seventy nine, one seven bypass in Fort Ice, and Washington Nursing and Rehab. 1411 Country Club Road right here in Camden. Check them out online, watchdownnursing.com, or uh, what was the other one? Oh, St. John's Place of Arkansas.com. First choice, Family Care, 476 Hospital Drive in Camden. We want to welcome David Davidson, our physician's assistant to First Choice Family Care. You know, that's just one more way that Dr. Smith is making it easy to uh, get the help that you need. 870-800-9002, 870-800-9002, the website, myfirstchoicecare.com, for all questions and stuff, just give them a call. OCMC's Chemical Dependency Unit, I don't care where you get the help, get the help you need, please. All right, addiction's tough, all right? You don't have to walk that road alone. Get the help you need. These people can do it. 870-836-1289, 1-800-232-1289, all calls are confidential. Mitch Lowe's Body Shop, Auto Body and Collision Repair, Framework, Glasswork, and Refinishing. All accidents, large or small, Mitch Lowe's handles them all, 2025 California. If you put it in the ditch, you better call Maria. 
at Mitch Lowe's Body Shop, 837-2560. Everybody's Antiques down in El Dorado. Their anniversary sale going on today and tomorrow. 120 booths, 31,000 square feet. I believe we determined that that was 15-plus houses all under one roof. Wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling, 15 houses under one roof of stuff. You got to love stuff. Stuff and things. We love stuff and things. Everybody's Antiques, corner of Bradley and West Hillsboro in El Dorado. Uh, you know, I called it Elder Radio earlier. Well, that's better than El Dorado. You, well, there is that. I, I figured <laughs> I could get away with Elder Radio a whole lot easier. Uh, let's see. Just don't tune in to Elder Radio Radio. Ah, see, see what I did there? Uh, ah, you know, wait, hey, we're better than the other guys. I'm just saying. You know, pff, big deal. Uh, pff, big deal. Cabin Rural Health. Cabin is a private nonprofit corporation developed to provide affordable care to meet the primary medical and dental care needs of the residents in eight counties of rural south and southwestern Arkansas. Learn more on their website, cabun.org, or call today, 870-798-4299. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We've got uh, Carrie Weatherford in the uh, studio with us this morning. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning. So, uh, you know, it, it's... It's going to screw me up today because, uh, you know, it, it's uh, Carrie Underwood's husband's birthday uh, today. What's to be confused about that? You, well, you know, I mean, because I was saying Carrie Underwood all doggone morning, and now it's Carrie Weatherford, and you know, she, it just screws me up. <laughs> anyway, all right. You guys hang out. You can be a winner just like Britt Honeycutt was just a few minutes ago of a dozen donuts from our buddies over at Sweetie Donuts. But you got to stay, stay tuned in. We'll be right back. It's time to check the Radio Works South Arkansas Community Bulletin Board. The Ruby Snyder Ministry Center Food and Clothing Pantry and Thrift Store, located at 133 Haynes Avenue in Camden, is open every Tuesday from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. They are also now open on the first, second, and third Tuesday evenings of every month from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. The center is now accepting clothing and food donations when they are open. Well, we made it to Friday. We're looking at a 20% chance it showers and thunderstorms, but it should be mostly cloudy, becoming sunny throughout the day with temperatures near 83. Tonight, cloudy skies and an overnight low near 63. For Saturday, slight chance at rain and thunderstorms late. It'll be mostly sunny with a temperature near 87. And on Sunday, 50-50 shot at rain, partly sunny and 86. Out of the Radio Works Weather Center, I'm JJ. Local sports update. Hello, sports fans. With a look at local games and scores, I'm Kelly Blair. Connor Nolan has pitched 81 and two-thirds innings for the University of Arkansas baseball team this season after throwing 18 in the 2020 season and only 14 and a third last year when he was sidelined for two months by a forearm injury. The drastically increased workload might explain why Nolan hasn't gone more than five innings in any of his previous starts and has allowed five runs in all of them after going at least six innings in eight of his 11 starts. But Arkansas coach Dave Van Horn and Nolan don't agree with the theory that the senior right-hander has been suffering from a tired arm going into his start today against Grand Canyon in the NCAA Stillwater, Oklahoma Regional at O'Bright Stadium. Van Horn said the coaching staff uses TrackMan and some other data on their pitchers and said Nolan's breaking ball and velocity has been good. It's just not been down in the strike zone. Nolan threw a combined 800 pitches with a high of 109 against Kentucky in eight consecutive games before dropping down to 78 at Auburn. He had a season-low 78 against the Gators in the SEC tournament. Nolan, who is 5-4 and four on the season with a 3.75 ERA, is hoping to regain his early form today when the Razorbacks open NCAA play. The Grand Canyon Antelopes will start freshman right-hander Daniel Oliva, who is 8-4 and four on the year with a 3.5 ERA and was named the Western Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Year. He's got 107 strikeouts and 16 walks in 82 and two-thirds innings and has held opponents to a 220 batting average. Game time is set for noon today with pregame radio coverage set for 1130 on Fox Sports Camden, 97.1 FM. The winner of the Arkansas Grand Canyon game plays either Oklahoma State or Missouri State on Saturday. That'll wrap it up for now with your sports update. I'm Kelly Blair. I'm the best there is at what I do, and what I do is sports. 
Good morning, South Arkansas. It's time for the Washtenaw River Report for Friday, June 3rd. In Camden, the current gauge reading is 10.41 feet. Flood stage is 26 feet. That's your lock and dam. The current gauge reading is 77.55 feet. Flood stage is 79 feet. And finally, at Morrow Bay State Park, the gauge reading is 70.4 feet. And flood stage is 82 feet. In 1836, Arkansas was admitted into the Union. Governor Archibald Yeld made Arkansas's 44th county, Washtenaw County, on November 29, 1842, carving it from the northwestern part of Union County and naming it for the river which flows through it. Reliability of this forecast is based on current and forecasted river and weather conditions from the National Weather Service in Little Rock. You guys have a terrific weekend, and please be safe out there. Wake up! That's right. It's time to rise and shine their buttercup. Wake up! It's always been my favorite button. <laughs> yeah, I had to record that, right? Because, I mean, you know, that's, that's actually me screaming that. And, uh... Yeah, I, there was no way I was going to do that every morning. I mean, it, 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 it like, killed my voice to do it the one time. Uh-huh. So, you know, I mean, if, if it's you know, just recorded, you know, then you... Wake up! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. The way, the way you say, wake up. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> I'll blow out my microphone here. All right, good Friday morning. Today is June 3rd, National Donut Day. We are celebrating in uh, sticky fashion. Our friends at Sweetie Donuts over on Cash Road, this is the uh, one right next to the barber shop, uh, you know, across the street from Balanced Tire, another one of our fine sponsors over here on Y95 and Magic 104.5 and KBEU, uh, the news, whatever they do. Oh, and then that sports station, whatever it's called. Uh, you, we, we've got all of these radio stations. You know, I don't know what they do on the other ones. Who care? Doc has to care. I don't have to care. <laughs> yeah, right. that, yeah, that put that on me. Yeah, well, I mean, I have to care a little bit. Anyway. All right, so, uh, oh, I'll tell you what. We'll go ahead and give away another dozen donuts. How do you like them apples? Ah, they ain't apples. They're donuts. Unless you get apple-flavored donuts. I got a gift certificate good for another dozen of donuts uh, from my buddies over at Sweetie Donuts. We'll give this one to caller number three, 836-9559, 836-9559 uh, for National Donut Day. Let's see here. Caller one, try again. Ooh, doggy, I love donuts. Man, they're nice and sweet and sticky and all of that stuff. Caller number two, try again. So uh, we do have Carrie Weatherford from our extension office here in the studio. Did I say it right or did I say Carrie Underwood? No, you said the right one. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, you know, some days are definitely better than others. Hang on. <laughs> hang, on hang on. Hold that thought. You're caller number three. You want a dozen donuts? I uh, sure do. You do? Who is this? It's Jessica. Jessica. Terrell. Huh? Jessica who? Dorel. Dorito? Dorel. <laughs> Jessica Dore- uh, Dorel. D-O-R-R-E-L-L? It is. E-L-L. All right, Jessica, you know where we're located, right? I do. Well, you can come by anytime after 9 o'clock this morning and get you a gift certificate, okay? Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Thanks. All right, Jessica Dorel. Not Dorito. Don't you guys make fun of her. All right. Jessica Durrell, she is uh, going to get a dozen donuts. I'm not done with that. All right. I mean, you know, me and Carrie Underwood, uh, Carrie Weatherford, uh, you know, what, whatever her name is, Carrie. We're not going to say her last name no more. I just get confused. <laughs> and then there's Duck Bryce. Mm-hmm. Look out, Duck. Everybody. <laughs> All right, yeah. I mean, all right, so it's a delayed reaction over here. We are going to be talking, before we give away more donuts, about uh, some summertime uh, gardening and stuff, right? Right. 
things. Yeah. Stuff things. and things. We love stuff and things. So, uh, don't yeah, Especially when you eat. What there is. Like to stuff yeah, things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, them stuffed donuts mm. and things, man. I there like them go. stuffed That's things. What I'm talking oh, about. Tell you, you know. Um, so, uh, uh, Doc, we, yeah. were, we were talking last week about your yard mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, what a wonderful job your landlords did at coming down and uh, maintaining your, your yard for you. Mm-hmm. They, they are just the bomb, the best landlords ever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, and, 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 you know, then they've got you, this deadbeat tenant. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Dude, the, I pay my rent. <laughs> so, <laughs> In fact, I just paid my rent. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm good for another 30 days, you know. Six, six months behind, but you know, I mean, hey, better late that. than never, right? Not even. Wait, well, isn't that the name of your show over there? Uh, hot Springs. Down in Hot Springs, better late than better never. Better late than never. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. See, I mean, yeah, everything ties together. It does, 100. percent Carrie's over here looking at me like, dude, didn't you say we were going to talk about me? Yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, we were talking last week about stuff going on in your yard, uh-huh. and. Uh, but yeah, you my know, yard's opened up now. Where where there used to be shade and, and yes, no sunlight, it's, it's awfully bright over there. It's now. bright over there, and I don't think that dirt knows what to do with itself. Did uh, the tree service make it out? No, not yet. Okay, well, you know, they're they're scheduled. So yeah, yeah, they're gonna chop away all that shady tree. No, that's all right. You didn't need that anyway. That's what we're keeping the house nice. It, and it'll cool. keep you keep you warmer this summer. Yeah, no kidding. My so, my my gas bill or my my fuel bill. You know the the petro that you put in the go go juice bill. Oh, for the pick 'em up truck. Yeah, it's mm. it's it, it was seven hundred and fifty something dollars and change for last month. Oh my God, who cares? I do. That's almost my rent. You well, you know, if you would stay your happy butt at home, it wouldn't be an issue. Well, <laughs> if I didn't have a child, I had to run back and forth between two counties. I mean, I'd be doing all right. You, well, you know, and there ain't no way you spent seven hundred fifty dollars in gasoline just running back and forth to go and get Mikey. I haven't seen him near that often. When you're paying four forty a gallon, yeah, yeah, it's possible. It's well, possible. You, you need to get a motorcycle. <laughs> what I need to do is just tell the boy, I'll you're, see you when you're, you're eighteen. Bicycle his way, <laughs> bicycle your butt down here, boy. <laughs> You're old enough to uh, be well, on your own for. You he'll teach turn him sixteen to, in two years. Yeah, exactly. What well, I mean, you know, he's old enough now. You can teach him how to hitchhike. Yeah, just pin twenty bucks on a shirt. Yeah, you know, <laughs> do it. Morning, Carrie. Good morning. So, uh, you know, we were talking about your yard, yeah. and uh, you know, you you wanted to know something. I did. Yeah, but we don't remember what it was you wanted to know. So uh, we we were going to ask. I think you kind of got interrupted. We were we got off on other things. Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, I know that the I know that the that the grass back there is uh it, there's no grass because it was always in the shade. Yeah. So now it's open. Mm-hmm. And now it's just dirt. <laughs> well, you want the grass to fill in? Will the grass do that on its own, or or does he need to help it? If he's got well, he has a couple things that you have risk of. Um, you know, well, okay. And there's another problem coming that, that I've actually had some work with lately. Um, when you cut down a tree, uh, yes, you've added more sunlight. So there's better potential for that grass to grow depending on the kind of grass and, and how it grows. It, it'll, it'll spread, but depend, it'll depend on how I, it, I want some St. Augustine back there. That'll oh. choke out all that other crap grass. Okay. Yeah. Well, then plant you some St. Augustine. Um, but you know, St. Augustine, you know, you, when you choose a grass, you just, you're choosing it cause it's pretty, right? I'm choosing it cause I grew up with it. It's mm-hmm. got no chiggers and it's soft to walk on barefoot. It is, it is soft to walk on barefoot. It is soft to walk on yeah, barefoot. Yeah. Don't have to worry about them chiggers. The chiggers don't like St. Augustine. You know, that's something yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. I think Doc's kind of full of it, but you know, I mean, it, it's nothing I would new question to this that show. with I mean, my. Yeah. I would question that with myself, but I don't know. I grew up with St. Augustine, and in our yard, we never got chiggers. But you go play in the neighbor's yard who didn't have St. Augustine, you get all bit up with chiggers. Huh. Well, that sounds interesting. But as far as choosing it, well, first off, you're going to choose a grass. Make sure you're choosing a grass that's appropriate for the area. Uh, you know, you know, do you need a shade tolerant? Just because you get rid of the trees doesn't mean it doesn't have a significant amount of shade still. Um, and you're going to have, uh, in a bare spot like that, that there's not any grass, you're going to have some weed competition, too. So you're going to have to deal with weeds as they come up while you're trying and to And St. Augustine will choke that out, too. 
St. Augustine, if treated correctly, can choke out some weeds, yes. Well, it'll choke, I don't know, it'll choke out anything. Any other kind of grass wants to try and grow around St. Augustine, where St. Augustine is strong, it'll just go in there and choke it out. Well, I have got some some fact, factuals for you on that. Okay. All right, so chiggers are more common in Bermuda grass. That's the one. And pasture land than they are in St. Augustine turf. All right, and their prime season is May through July. So rather than trying to spray all the areas where you might encounter chiggers, they in, uh, encourage you to spray your bare feet and calves with DEET and then put your socks and shoes on and spray your shoes and pant cuffs. All right, mm-hmm. so, you know, I mean, that's that's how they do it. They're, they're bad out there in that transmitter field. And then yeah, if you will keep your St. Augustine lawn between four and five inches long, uh, you will do a whole lot better. If your lawn is too long, chiggers will breed. It'll be potty <laughs> But that's the other thing, too, is you can't cut. And you can't cut St. Augustine too short because you'll burn it out. So uh, no, that, That's the case with any grasses, though. Well, St. Augustine likes to be left a little bit longer. It, it's healthier if you, if you cut it a little bit longer compared to short like you would with, with most yards. That's just my experience. If you cut it too short, it just, it, it just dies out. Well, not n- – yes, okay. That's with any grass, though. A lot of people – and it, it will probably die out a little bit quicker. St. Augustine is, in my opinion, a relatively sensitive grass. Yes, it is. Um, it has sensitive feelings. It, 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 it does. And so – It's okay, little buddy. St. Augustine is, is, is beautiful grass, um, and it looks good in the yard and everything, but it is kind of a little picky. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you start looking at any kind of, of grasses in general, um, a lot of people overcut. A lot of people are mowing their lawns um, too often and too short, especially, excuse me, <laughs> Bless you. 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 Excuse me. Um, but you know, a lot of times when, uh, when we cut. <laughs> I, I'm going to get that recorded next time in heaven. You always recorded this time. So. No, don't do that. Oh, yeah. We're no, it's gonna recorded. Use that one regularly. It just went out over Facebook oh, yeah. Live. Uh, recorded. A two. A two. Anyway. Uh, you don't ever want to, just like we've talked about with pruning more than once, you don't ever want to cut more than a third of the grass at a time. And that's in any lawn situation. So whether you're talking about St. Augustine, Bermuda, Zoysia grass, uh, it, it does not matter. You don't, if you let your grass, you go on vacation and you don't cut your lawn before and you come back and you're busy and you don't cut it when you get back, then what you're going to find is that everyone does this they go out there and their lawn is way too long um they're not happy with it. they need to get it they need to get it looking good and they go out there and they cut it they cut it where they always cut it they cut half the blade off well that's too much and that's not healthy for your plant so uh we actually have a chart i'm looking at right now that uh tells you a different mowing height okay? you know my neighbor cuts his lawn where it looks like the green on a golf course where the pin is, you know, you know how you've got the fairway which looks really nice, full and lush. Yeah. But then you got the green where you know the 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 hole is, mm-hmm. and how short that is. Yes. Compared to the everything else, yeah, that's how my neighbor likes to cut his yard. Uh, this, yeah, that that's probably a little short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that's something that that could be concerning. And well, the only you reason know, why you got to cut it once. Well, the only reason why I bring that up is because he likes to cut my side of the yard that way too. Oh, lovely. So it looks like a golf course. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you need to be able to putt. <laughs> well, now, and so so is he, is he mowing like every other day or something? Uh, he's mowing like once a week at least. Okay, and that's not uncommon. I'm looking at a list of mowing heights for lawns, okay? So if you're looking at a common Bermuda, uh, it's suggested that you mow between one and a half to two and a half inches is the height you're looking at. Centipede grass is your one and a half to two inches. Um, St. Augustine, here you go. Look at you knowing your numbers. Two and a half to four inches. Mm-hmm. You want to keep it long. Zoija is... Uh, Zoija. Zoija. Zoija? Is that what you said? Zoija? Yeah, that's what I said, Zoija. Zoija grass? Yes. 
Is that a thing? Yeah, it's it's another pretty grass. I think grass. Carrie is making <laughs> making up stuff over here now. You know, so uh, she's been hitting the coffee a little there, early. There, this there's morning. no better time than the bread. Go ahead, I'll let you finish this. Oh no, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Zoidia grass. Zoidia grass. First off, is a beautiful grass too. It's uh-huh. right up there with Saint Augustine. It's most not... fantasies are. I got you. Uh huh. And <laughs> hey, there's a lot of people out in Marshall County that has zoidia grass, but they the mowing height. The recommendation is between a cor- uh, three quarter inch to two and a half inches. But, um, you know, you, you just got to be careful not to scalp your lawn when you're doing your uh-huh. cutting and make sure that your your uh, blades are sharp. You know, Pete, did you know there's a better time or a worse time to do your mowing? Well, yeah. I mean, you should do your mowing in the afternoon, right? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it, I wouldn't do it in the heat of the day. No, no, no. The late afternoon. And that, that's when you suppose to. That way your grass has all night to kind of get over the shock of being cut before the sun hits it and, you know, just dries it out over uh, over the next couple of hours. That that will definitely be effective. You know, I want to I want to cut my lawn when it's cool outside for sure. Um, but uh, and but you don't want to do it when it's wet. So you don't want to do it when the dew has hit no, no, no. or before the dew has dried. Again, in the afternoon. Yes, that afternoon, Evening. late, mid morning. You know, if it's if it's cool enough, that would be effective. But afternoon is definitely a great time to do it. Um, now, a lot of people like to use baggers. Do y'all use baggers when you do your mowing? I do. No, I I, I try not to. Uh, well, I like to share share the well. They they don't have to be baggers. They they could be you know just guys walking down the street. They don't have to be carpet baggers. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's a great time to give away another dozen donuts. <laughs> It's you National know, Donut use, Day. I use a bagger on the first cut of the season. You, you, you like the carpet baggers? Okay. Yeah. That, that's okay. something to think about. You know, if you uh, you wanted to give donuts away. Yes, right. caller 3, 836-9559. Go ahead and call me now. 836-9559. We'll take caller number 3 for another dozen donuts from my buddies over at Sweetie Donuts. For, yeah. for National yeah. Donut Day. National Donut Day, baby. Well, you know, I mean, I, I just thought this would be a fun way to do that. And... Uh, Interrupt Carrie as many times as I possibly <laughs> could. Good morning. You're caller number one. Try again. Well, it makes me want to go in there and go get some donuts. Well, you know, they, they, I'm telling you, man, and they get good donuts over there, you know. Caller number two. Try again. See, they're listening to us. I, I, I see that. I have bought the listeners this morning. You right? have. You have. All right. Caller number three. You trying to cash in on a dozen donuts? I am. Who's this? Kathy Mullinex? Mullinex. Uh-huh. Mul- Mullinex. Hey, is Kathy with Mullinex. a C or a K? It's a K. A K. All right, so you're one of those. <laughs> and I'm one. You, nothing, nothing, nothing. Mullinex. M-U-L-L. Mullet. I-N. I-N. I-X. Mullinex. That must be Cajun. Mullinick. Mullinick. <laughs> no, we, I am not Cajun. We, we are not going to make fun of her ethnicity. I am Texan. She is oh, Texan. Texan. By God, you better get that right, you little transplant. <laughs> you over day now. She's a feller Texan. All right, Kathy. You know where we're located, right? Kathy? Uh, over there in Fairview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right here on Mount Holly and uh, Fairview. Right across from the old boys and girls club, the old uh, high school gym. I do. All right, you come by here anytime after nine o'clock this morning and get you a gift certificate. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you listening in. Have you noticed how the Texans are kind of squeezing out a lot of the uh, locals? Bye, Kathy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. We we thank you. All right, it, it's good, Kathy. Congratulations! Thanks for listening again. That's because the Texans love taking over everything. You know, we're we're expanding, expand, uh, we're growing. Well, that's how we got Texas in the Everything's first place. Things bigger in Texas. That's right. We went in and we took Texas. We're like, now, you know, this is really nice looking and, and everything. Know, you, this would be great for my ranch you, and my you house. Mexicans cannot have this <laughs> land. All right, this is Texican land. Yeah. So we're claiming it in the name of a uh, Texas. Texas. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> morning, Carrie. Good morning. Uh, where were we? We were talking about using baggers on the lawn. Yeah. Oh, the carpet baggers. That's right. Yeah. I like to I like to bag my grass the first cut of the season. And I bet it's because of weeds. Yes. Okay. That's not uncommon, and it's not necessarily a bad idea. Um, but like now, when people are cutting their lawns, uh, we we strongly discourage. I mean, you from bagging 
your grass because it's kind of like you know I've talked to you guys about hay before taking hay and removing hey. it. Hay, hey. yeah. So what's she doing? So when you're removing you when you're removing girl? anything off your property, you're removing nutrients that can degrade and go back into the soil. See, I use a mulcher mower. Okay, that's good. So, it goes back into the grass. Right. Yeah, so, see, I, I've got the greatest landlord on the planet. I don't have to use a mower. Oh, wow. You, well, I'm telling you, you know, there's a reason why I rent. Okay. That, that sounds <laughs> you know? amazing. It is amazing because I got like 40 acres out there, right? And Carrie's right, been out there. Right. And uh, he, he mows the whole thing. So, uh, oh, that's wonderful. It is. It is. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you, you were saying? Yeah, um, that I, I want your landlord. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, my yeah. husband does most of the mowing, but every now and then I have to get out there and get it done because it's got to get done. I, yeah, I don't care. Not my favorite thing. You don't care. You don't <laughs> yeah, have to do it, so give, you're like whatever. I don't give a darn. But okay. when you're when you're mowing, you know, a lot of people uh, do put baggers behind their mowers, uh, especially. Yeah, way back when I did have to mow. Mm-hmm. All right, I did bag for the first uh, couple of mows each year, but that was to control things like you know the weeds and mm-hmm. the stickers. Because okay. I, I found that if I if I mowed with the bag the first couple of times that I had to mow, I didn't have stickers the rest of the year. But if I used to use that, that mulching mower like Duck Bryce over here, uh, you know, I ended up having stickers everywhere. Okay. Well, that, that that's not a method I've heard of to keep, keep stickers away. But you were probably, it's probably because you had an effective vacuum and you were pulling those sticker seed heads up. Were you trying to say that my lawnmower sucked? No. Yeah, well, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, makers of Toro appreciate you. Okay. So anyway, that that's a good thing um, because right now, I mean, it's it's not the right time to control stickers in your yard. So I mean, if that if that was an effective means and somebody else can use that and it, it works, that's great. I don't, um, but it, it definitely is something that a lot of people use because. Uh, it, you're, what you're doing is you're ba- bagging up those seed heads. You're bagging up those winter weeds. You're bagging up the seed heads that, that have popped up. If you haven't, you know, there's a period in time where we go from no lawn to lawn and and a bunch of weeds. It's just, it's just not, and that is an effective means of getting of quite a, a, a semi-organic or an organic method of getting rid of quite a bit of that weed. So that's that's a good thing. Um, at this point, however, I would not encourage people to be to be t- removing stuff off of their lawn. If so you leave need the to, stickers alone. Let them live, baby. Let them live. Sure, go for it. Let them live. Uh, give me a call. We'll talk about how to get rid of stickers. That's a great verify. idea. Give me a call if you want another dozen donuts, or if you want to win a dozen donuts. Eight three six nine five five nine. We'll give away another dozen donuts, courtesy of our friends over at Sweetie Donuts over on Cash Road. That's right. Eight three six nine five five nine. Uh, I'll take caller number. Uh, to, what, what caller should I take? Two. Two. Curious. Okay, can we get along with that? All right. No, caller, you've done two. four and three. Well, that's, that's true. Caller number two. All right. Good morning. Your caller one. Try again. All right, we're looking for caller two this morning, 836-9559. we got another dozen donuts we're going to give away. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to bag your lawn and all of that, that's a groovy thing. But what if you don't have a bagger? If you Well, okay, if in the winter, I mean, if you're, we suggest you don't bag your lawn. So if you're going to bag your lawn and your goal is the weed control, you're just going to do that at the beginning of the year. But uh, if you're not, then that's where we can start some early herbicide recommendations. Um, and uh, that's a discussion I'll have to have individually with, with every clientele. All right. You're caller number two. You want to uh, get you a free dozen donuts? Sure. Who's this? Laura Evans. Laura Evans. How am I supposed to have fun with that? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, Laura, thank you for listening. Get a funnier name. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> you know where okay. we're located? Yes, sir. All right, anytime after 9, we'll uh, have a gift certificate waiting for Laura Evans down at the uh, front desk. All right, thank you. All right, thank you for listening. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right, uh, Laura Evans, she she sounded like a really sweet lady and all, but, uh, you know, I, I got nothing for Laura or Evans. You know, I mean, short of, you know, tell Laura I love her. I, mean, I, do, I, I don't know. Where were we? Not bagging the lawn. Not bagging the lawn. Yes. Yeah, so there's some we can Harry's look like, at. 
I some don't remember. herbicide recommendations. But part of it, you, you know, you can start cutting earlier. And, and then before the seed heads get an opportunity to come up, and then while, you have to remove while them. While there's still snow on the ground. No, not while there's still snow on the ground. You said do it earlier, what, like 4 o'clock in the morning? Before you start getting seed heads. Now, the problem is, a lot of times that's a wet time of year, and it's hard to get out and mow the lawn, too. Um, so that's something to consider. But if you can get out there and it's dry enough, you can get out there and mow before you start getting to those seed heads and never let the seed heads get up. There's nothing to take and remove. So wait, let me ask you this. So, you know, I mean, you, we got to mow the grass. You got to mow the grass. We got to mow the grass. All right. So, uh, you know, what is the best length? I mean, does it vary from yard to yard? I mean, you know, to cut your grass? Yes. It's going to depend on what kind of grass you have. Remember, I was I was reading you that little chart that had zoysia in it? No. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you don't remember I mean, no, that word? No, no. I've, get, I've given away four dozen donuts since then. Yeah, so the, it does depend on the kind of grass you have in your lawn, how high you're cutting it. Um, and, and that makes a difference in how often you're cutting it as well. Um, you what, know, what kind of grass do they have at the golf course? You know, I, I don't know. That's golf kind of, grass. Golf grass? I yeah. want golf grass. I, I bet it's something that's more of a hybridized Bermuda or something like that. Because yeah, they, they cut that stuff daily. They they are. They are. But, you know, when you watch them cut it, they're they're not cutting hardly any off at a time. They're cutting well, very small. they want small. the ball to go right where it's supposed to go and stop. Right. Exactly. They want it to be the same height. They want it to look good. There's, there's a lot to that. What if I want grass that looks like AstroTurf? We can go get some AstroTurf. Well, <laughs> I don't know how to grow AstroTurf. So if you want grass to look like AstroTurf, um, try a different state. Stories, floor, and carpet, folks. That's where you get your AstroTurf. Um, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but no, if, if then try a different state. But it would be a combination of, of uh, herbicide. It would be a combination of using mechanical controls. Um, you're going to have to be out in it every day looking at it and addressing every situation the day it comes up. So, uh, you know, we, we've determined... That, it's like that, a garden. I mean, you're growing grass. We, we've determined that Carrie, you know, supports diesel on ant piles. We have determined Carrie does not. Gasoline, unleaded only. All right, none of that corn stuff. That's bad, right? Corn stuff? Yeah, you know, the, ethanol. that ethanol gasoline. Oh, yeah. ethyl. I like yeah. ethyl. She's good. Oh, I, she, tell you, I don't have a problem sweet with girl ethanol. Over there. Oh, <laughs> ethanol, sure like ethanol, ethanol gas is good for the ant piles. No. No? No gas is good for the impulse. Well, call Ethel. Just call Ethel over. Have her take care of your aunt's yeah. problem? Yeah, Ethel take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Ethel been good at taking care of the uncle problem. Uh -huh. Look at saying, some, yeah. some over and out or, or something that is a bait product if you're looking at ant control. It, it, well, you know, I I tried you know, putting some uh, seven, seven dust. Mm -hmm. Out on the ant piles the other day because we put a little pool up for the the grandkids, and, and it, as soon as I put the pool up, here come the ants. Yeah, because there's water. And they invited the uncles too. I'm here to tell you, it was it was a bad party, but uh, you know, so I put out a little bit of seven dust, right? Mm -hmm. And all them boogers did was move from there to where I hadn't put the seven dust. Well, okay, so that yeah, I'm sure they did, and they'd have done the same thing if you put chips on top of them. Okay, so what, potato chips. Yeah, you know, ants love chips, right? But if you'd put potato chips on it, they'd have moved their mound. Um, it's Whoa, a little confusing. I mean, no, I'm sitting here thinking I got a bunch of potato chips on top of the ice box, man. I just drop them boogers in the spreader and. Pfft. But they're just going to move it. They're not going to kill anything. Well, all right. If I put potato chips everywhere, they can move to the neighbor's house. You know, uh, if you just get you a little, lucky. if you just get you a sharpshooter. And a, uh, one of them little red cans, you know, and kind of douse it over the mound and everything and then throw a match on it and then take that sharpshooter and just shoot it down into the mound and bring it up, flip it over. Oh, I tell you what, you just see all kinds of things get cooked. And no more ant problem. That is very imaginative. Um, it works, though, because you got to use that sharpshooter to get down deep into that mound, see, and then you bring them up. And then you flip them over, and then uh, you let them cook. What about transmission fluid? Would transmission <laughs> fluid be good for it? No, What if no. I just dump my oil over there, you know? Because, I mean, i got to change the oil anyways. I well, mean, I'm, I'm right. thinking, you know, at this point, I'm taking care of the weeds and the bugs. Uh -huh. and, you know what I mean? It's, it's like an all-in-one. When you're, yeah, and your grass, too. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> well, they already killed the grass. <laughs> when you're looking. Well, no grass growing there anyway. Big old uh, ant pile. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so ants, ants, ants. Shark shoes. Um, I completely lost this for a minute there. Gasoline. <laughs> she, was, she was talking about putting potato chips on the ants. Yeah, that's that's where we were. Well, what feed, I was getting feeding at. Feeding the ants. You know, we're baiting for them. You, know, you catch a big one if you put the right kind of chip out. Barbecue chips. Yeah, I bet you favorite. would. What but... if you just poured some vodka over them? <laughs> was that more environmentally friendly? Well, I mean, you know, it comes hey, from that taters, might be right? fun to I mean, watch. That, that's a tater product, right? It is from potatoes, but not only that, though, it'd be fun to watch them ants party. Lord, thank you. <laughs> that's when that weird uncle comes by. <laughs> okay. So when you're, <laughs> when you're ants, when you put something on top of a mound, I don't care what it is. I mean, an ant is going to treat it as an invasive, something bad. I've noticed that. I've kicked a mound and then throw food on it, and they'd like walk off with the food. They don't like bringing they're, it inside. They're, they're, they're not, not bringing yeah, their own? No, because they're carrying it off because they if it goes on their mound, they automatically assume that it's bad. So if you're going out there and putting seven dust on your mound, they're going to carry it away. And then they're going to move their mound so they're in a safer position. Where So the things, the couple things that are something to be really aware of when you use any kind of ant control. First off, a bait product is going to be uh, more effective because it's going to get to kill the queen. Okay. Second off, uh, dawn or dusk is when you put ant bait out. You put that out so that it gets on there. It, you, uh, you put it out at dawn or dusk because that's when your ants are foraging. And you don't put it on the mound. You put it around the mound. So don't kick the mound. Don't kick. Do not disturb the mound. <laughs> And don't put it on top of the mound. So, like, um, if we if 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 we run over an ant bed in my yard, which we get them really well, uh, and we run over an ant bed mowing the yard. Okay, that's not when I'm going to treat the ants. I'm going to wait till their mound until they get their mound back up and going, till they feel safe and secure, and then yes, I'm going to wait till it seems that's like that's when you pour you the vodka. That's up. when you. That's Carrie, Carrie that's, uh, uh, Weatherford. That's, she's into that S and M stuff on ants. That's when you bring in that vodka. But the only thing is, though, is I feel bad, you know, because that's wasting good vodka. I could be drinking that, too. Right. Mm. Well, well you know, drink it while own, you pour you know. the bait around <laughs> a little for me, the mound. A little for the ants, a little bit more for me. A little, a little bit more for Santa Claus. <laughs> a little bit more for Santa Claus. Might be kind of fun to watch. Random fact. Have y'all ever seen ants, like, float? Like in a flood or something? Yeah, they can float. To you members of the ASPCA, you can find Carrie Weatherford across <laughs> the street. Okay? Well, you could. Well, what I'm saying, drowning is not going to be effective. No, because you could actually take like a, a a dog food bowl, and then put it inside of another bowl that's got water. So you create like a. Uh, that uh, will slow them down. But they will still get to the food. They will still get to the food. That will slow them down. I have used that more than once. But Yeah, you would think the water, like if you built like a little moat around the dog food, that that would uh, keep the ants away? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, well, they, they swim. You know, I, I personally believe y'all have entirely too much time on your hands. Okay? We just have too many dogs. No, my problem is I've, I've tried to detour ants to go away, and they find ways to get around my ways to make them go away, to stay. Okay, then. <laughs> Okay, that sounds good. No, that's bad. I don't want them to stay. <laughs> At this point, I should say, thanks for coming in, Carrie. Bye. We, we really appreciate you coming, and, and we want you to come back Thanks again. for stopping by. You know, uh, you know, really, really would do. All right, so uh, wrap it up for me real quick. Okay, ant control. Dawn or dusk is when you treat. Don't put it on the mound. Put it around the mound. Um, and... Uh, Diesel is not an option, and uh, if you want an organic method, uh, if you can boil water and get Use it fast Willy enough out fuel there, instead. Uh, no, an organic method would be boiled water, but it's it's cause you're gonna it's bio not gonna diesel. do guarantee that you're gonna kill everything. Yeah, uh, bio diesel is a bio, yeah, yeah, it's, right? Uh, yeah, it's made for yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Then. Boiling water. But it's it's fr- it's French fry oil. It's that's, it's that's bio diesel. But the, the, it's organic biodegradable then as i've said uh lots of times with you guys um <laughs> i can't give out things that don't have research behind them and there's no research there willie nelson, so. willie researched, nelson it. researched it hard and heavy uh, I mean, he spent no a doubt lot did. of time on this one okay uh-huh. it's like dang oh you should be <laughs> some <my> biofuel <laughs> man you know come on down. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gas man <laughs> <laughs> He had fun uh, researching it. Uh-huh. I have no doubt. Yeah, because man, every time you burn this 
biodiesel, man. It smells like yeah, skunk. Boy, let me tell you, <laughs> that's a good thing. You get this buzz thing. Going oh, on, wow, man. man. I got to tell you, dude. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Willie's going to be in town June 22nd. Yeah. And Carrie's like, really? It's true. Yeah. Not, not this town. He's going to be in that town. But he's not going to be bringing biofuel. No, no, no. And no. he's he's awfully nice to the aunts and the uncles. Oh, that's good. So, uh, yeah, you know. So, hey, if you guys want to uh, win a pair of tickets to see Willie Nelson, yes. Doc and I are going to be doing a little thing with Littlefield Express. Uh, we, we, we're calling it "On the Road Again." <laughs> see how it has uh, really worked yeah, out. See so there, you know, we're we're kind of we're kind of smart fellers. <laughs> right? Or you could change a couple of letters there, and yeah, that would fit too. Anyway, so uh, you know, we will be uh, getting you more details as to how you can win those Willie tickets. Uh, coming up here in the next week or so. Yeah. So you guys get ready for that. Right now, oh, I've got one more dozen donuts to uh, give away. They're mine. Eight three six nine five five nine. Let me know, call in. If, uh, you know, you want them more than Doc Bryce, be the, uh, the, the fifth caller. Eight three six nine five five nine. Eight three six nine five five nine. We'll go ahead and take caller number five right now. Good morning, caller. Are you calling about the donuts? I am. Oh, well, you're number one, so try again. <laughs> there. See what I've done there? Yeah, you actually talked to her. You, but, you know, I mean, it's, the it's, line's busy. The line's busy. Yeah, somebody uh, needs to hang up so I can get Can't through. imagine that. Uh, caller number two, <laughs> try again. <laughs> All right, guys and gals. Uh, we are the round table brought to you each and every weekday morning by our buddies over at Stories, Floor, and Carpet. You're calling. Your caller number three, try again. Uh, let's see, stories, floor, and carpet, quality you got on since 1958. Caller number, what, what am I on, four? four? Caller number four, try again. See, that's the only problem with adding different numbers to the, that's why I always say caller three. That way I don't have to think, what number did I say again? <laughs> All right, your caller number five, are you trying to get you some free donuts? Yeah, I am. Yeah, well, I actually made it through. You know, uh, it, it it it's really one of those things. You know, uh, employees are not eligible to win. What you're just saying that because I'm calling five? Yes, yes, I am. Oh, that is so wrong. Yes, well, you, you know, know what? I'm just gonna go get my own donuts. Then. You know, I would recommend Sweetie Donuts right next to the barber shop over here That's on Castro. Go. Yep, good yeah. stuff. And I'm gonna over eat there. them in front of you. Huh? That's okay. Yeah. You, know, I, you know, I will remember yeah. that the next time I buy breakfast. Oh, you can have a few. Oh, have a few. yeah. Well, there we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, so now we're looking for caller number six. Caller number six, you get some donuts. Curtis, all right. Good, good, good morning. Uh, good are, morning. Are you trying to get you some donuts? I sure am. been trying hard. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who is this? Teresa Bennett. Teresa Bennett. All right, is it T-E or T-H-E? T-E. See, I, I knew that. You know, I will share my before. donuts that I was supposed to win with her. I'll share them with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Teresa, you know where we're at. Come on by uh, any time after 9, and uh, we'll, we'll get you hooked up with a gift certificate, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> Boy, I figured out how to keep listeners the whole dog on morning this time, right? You wouldn't expect me to sneak through, yeah, though. Yeah, well, no, I, yeah, I'm kind of watching <laughs> what you're doing. So. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting. Oh, look, they're calling on the other <laughs> line. That's what Give them donuts. When, yeah, that's what happens when I do it on the uh, other line. All right, guys and gals, the roundtable uh, brought to you by a whole bunch of people. We are way out of time. Carrie, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll have uh, Carrie back in here. Or you, you are in here next week, right? Yes, sir. All right. Cause she, she throws it on me every night. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to be here next week. I've got a hair appointment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, they know better than that. I have to get I got. I got to get my nails done. <laughs> yes. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. All right. We are uh, going to go ahead and get through this uh, other stuff. You guys hang out, and we'll do more yeah. on the morning shift. Yeah. Your name here. News Talk 92 KBEU Bearded. News Talk for South Arkansas. News Talk 92 KBEU. The children of this country, the way that you have failed us. Okay, this, generation- is, uh, this is amazing. This is amazing. We will do.